Hello friends, welcome to this new Microsoft Fabric series. If you already attended Build, uh, you already know what Microsoft Fabric is. But if you haven't attended uh, Build, MS Build, there was a new product or a suite of products uh, introduced uh, called Microsoft Fabric. It is all related to data, data analytics, whether it's data engineering, data science, and all that fun stuff. What I'm gonna do in this series is look at Microsoft Fabric from the Power BI developer or a SQL developer point of view. How does that fit into my data story or my workflow? Again, just to let you guys know, I am working with Power BI since it has been introduced. And I've been in a SQL world for more than 20 years now. A lot of my solutions and clients are using SQL and Power BI and all that stuff. And I never worked on anything like data science, data engineering, that's not my domain. It's more on the analytical side, what I do, not on the data science perspective. But Microsoft Fabrics give us a lot of tooling and this wide spectrum of things that you can do. I want to understand how does this works for me, what is in it for me, what I can use, why I should change what I'm doing right now, and how I leverage this new technology or new uh, products which has been introduced. Before we deep dive into this or have an introduction, I just wanna tell a few things here. I will be doing a lot more videos on Microsoft Fabric from the perspective how it will fit into my work and for my clients. Also, I want to have a disclaimer here because the screenshots, what we're gonna see or certain um, Power BI service or other things I'm gonna show, they might change over time because this product is still in preview, in public preview and we expect a lot more changes. There are a lot of buzzwords around this. That's the one thing that always scares me. One lake, lake house, data warehouse, data flow gen two, and other, a lot more other things being um, what we heard or seen or in the documentation. So we're gonna explore into all those stuff. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna quickly talk about what happens when you enable Microsoft Fabric in your Power BI service? Yes, you need a premium capacity for this. That's the first thing. Second thing is you need to enable it under your tenant uh, admin settings. Uh, there is a, a setting which uh, allows you to turn on the Microsoft Fabric. And after we do that, we see certain new things in our Power BI service. Let's take a look at those. Okay, let's create a let's create a workspace and assign it to a premium capacity to enable all Microsoft Fabric uh, feature uh, or the tools available under Microsoft Fabric. So we're going to go to uh, my workspace and sorry workspaces and new workspace. Let's call it fab test. And uh, I already have a premium capacity. Let's assign that P1 and apply. Okay, so here we are. Our workspace is created and assigned to a premium capacity. And uh, under new, what I'm going to do is in go under show all. So this is what is Microsoft Fabric uh, bring for us if it is enabled on Canon. So we have a data engineering. It's all grouped very nicely. For data engineering, these are kind of tools. Data factory, which is for data transformation and which contains Gen 2, data flow Gen 2. We will closely look into that. For data science, that's not my area. Tons of stuff in here. Uh, data warehouse. Now, again, this is something uh, I don't know what that is. Of course, creating a data warehouse, but we will see how it is different. Again, the point is I'm going to look everything from the SQL point of view because that's my, my domain. That's my knowledge. That's what I do all the time. 
then of course power bi artifacts what we create and then real time analytics so let's uh, create a lake house first and see what happens here so we will create a lake house let's give it a name fab test lake house and create okay great so what we have here is we have a lake house with files and the tables and uh, oh wow that's that's a good news there is a sql endpoint for sql querying to fall data set so it means if the data lands in the lake house doesn't matter how it lands there we will look into that in in this video maybe our upcoming videos and then i can run a sql query against that that's awesome news because that helps me i don't uh, I don't need to worry about, okay, I need to learn some other knowledge, technology or some other language to query the data. I can use my SQL knowledge, which is great. And one other thing also notice here that it automatically provision a SQL um, data warehouse endpoint at the back end. So if we go to the fab test, and what we see here is we created a lake house, and that's how does this icon look like. And then it already created a SQL endpoint. I guess this makes me think that I can, um, you know, run my SQL query against that. It, it's automatically done. So that's that's a good news. Um, let's uh, go back to the Fab Test Lake House and try to load some data in there. It has given some uh, options here. You can load the data using Gen2, new data pipeline, notebook. Again, that's on my area. New shortcut. Again, I don't know. We will look into the shortcut as well uh, and see what that is. So, okay, so this is a, a lake house. So basically what it did is it automatically created a, a, a lake house and then the SQL endpoint. Now let's go back to uh, our workspace and, uh, oh, hang on a second. It aut automatically also created a data set default. So basically, when I created a lake house, it created three artifacts. It's a lake house itself and the SQL endpoint for the lake house and a data set. It means that's a Power BI data set default. When we, I guess we can create our load more data sets on top of that. By default, it created one, but we will able to create our own data set. So that, that's awesome. So let's go back here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a data warehouse. Let's call it uh, fab test and uh, data warehouse. So here you go, create. Okay, so data warehouse has been created and uh, amazing. So what we see here is a schema table. So that seems very SQLish kind of thing and uh, new SQL query, this is awesome. And let's see what other artifacts has been created in uh, in our workspace. Okay, so we already have three artifacts from Lakehouse, which is a Lakehouse itself, then a SQL endpoint. Uh, the icon for that is just like a data warehouse, and then also a, a default data set. And when we create the data warehouse, it is a now type is a warehouse the icon look the same as the sql endpoint if you look at these two so i guess they are more or less the same thing and then it also automatically created a power bi data set okay so basically when you create a lake house it automatically create a default data set which we can use in power bi and also when we create a warehouse it create a uh, d um, default data set uh, i think that the the next part we can do is uh, we can try to load the data in data warehouse because there is a provision that you can use the sample database and try that. So let's do one thing, load use sample database to load the data. So it's saying loading sample data and see what happens. Okay, here it finished uh, loading the sample data and let's see uh, what we see here. So we go to schemas and uh, go to tables. So it loaded some tables here, which is awesome. I can look into the table metadata. Okay. And can we run a SQL query, which which is really a, I'm more interested in, right? And go to SQL query and maybe let's see, let's extract star from weather. 
Here you go. So now we can use our SQL and uh, run it against our data warehouse. And I see there is a my queries folder and shared queries folder. Maybe we will explore those. I guess you, we can save those queries. And I can actually also create the views. There is already one created, so perfectly fine. But let's look from the data set perspective. What happens in the data set? If you remember when we create the data warehouse, it automatically created a, a data set for us, which is this one. So if I go to this data set, what I can see in there, here you go. So that data set contains all the tables, which we can see on the side here. And uh, I guess uh, I can create a report. Can I open a data model to view right this data model open corresponding data mart? I don't know what does that means. I guess the default data set I cannot open but I don't know where I will see the relationship of these tables and whatnot. I guess we will connect this with the Power BI and we can take a look at that. In summary, Microsoft Fabric is a one single place for all the various data related activities you wanted to perform whether it's data engineering data science analytical data preparation like uh, using data flow gen 2 or data factory so everything is one single place which is awesome previously either you have you are using synapse or data factory uh, or other tools to bring the data in and one more thing is which is very important there is a one lake which is used as a storage under the hood and the data does not matter how it lands into that one lake it is stored into the delta tables and uh, we we just uh, imported the data into data warehouse in this particular video in next video we will bring the data into lake house now one more thing when we created a lake house it automatically created a SQL endpoint, which is awesome. And also it created a default data set, which I guess we can use with Power BI. Similarly, when we created data warehouse, it automatically created a Power BI data set as well. And one more thing, those default data set, we cannot open those data set at this point of time. I guess we will be able to create our own on top of lake house and on top of data warehouse we will explore that in the coming videos and but right now we cannot change the default data sets anyhow this is a good start uh, i i am liking it the reason i am liking it because um, there is a sql which i can use i can bring my knowledge and i can use it i don't have to learn anything new but we will still explore it further do subscribe to my videos and upcoming all videos will be on Microsoft Fabric as I learn and I will share it with you guys and I will, as I'm exploring and learning uh, all will come out in these videos. Looking forward for your comments and the feedback and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks and have a good day. Bye for now. Thank you.